My grandfather Cecil Jones, I suppose, unofficially began Telltale Productions back in 1916 when the Joneses became members of the railroad fraternity. My grandfather worked for the Canadian Pacific in northern Vermont and southern Quebec for almost 50 years. It was while in service in North Troy that he met my grandmother, um, Elsie Pangborn, and the two uh, ended up clicking and a few years later got married and before long my father Robert C. Jones was born. My dad developed his own interest in the Iron Horse, eventually uh, finding time for some 40 years in rail service in addition to the 20 odd railroad books that he has written. He's also raised a family and <laughs> done a number of things. I don't really know how he has managed to fit it all in. Now. Not to be outdone, my mother Janet has also worked in rail service, working for the Vermont Railway and the Green Mountain Railway in various uh, passenger-related services, sometimes as a hostess, sometimes selling tickets, and sometimes doing other things. My brother Mark has done time as a, a Central Vermont employee and New England Central, working in various positions including the bridge tender up at East Alberg and as a locomotive engineer. And the closest I ever came to train service was in elementary school <laughs> when I'd break out the Crayola crayons and draw pictures of Vermont Railway SW 1500s and Rutland RS 3s during art time. For reasons I don't fully understand, the lock and switch key and railroad lifestyle was not really for me. However, the microphone was. Broadcasters are an interesting bunch where market size is everything. The bigger, the better. My hometown of Burlington, Vermont was the perfect entry-level radio market where green radio announcers have a chance to cut their teeth, learn valuable lessons, work for minimum wage, make a whole lot of mistakes, and if they're so inclined after they've learned a few lessons, try to get into the bigger leagues. Denver, Colorado was my dream market. 44 radio stations, including 95 KIMN, 1150 KRZN, and 96 KPKE. So the radio was good, more than 2 million listeners, and there was lots of trains. It was perfect. Cruising through 760s in a row on the new 760 KRZN. Nobody gives you more. 760 KRZN with Wayne Fontana playing the game of love. Something that Bill likes to do every now and then. Nine oh, before don't three. You, don't you, though? It's the best game in town, I'll tell you. It's a lot better than Monopoly, I'll give you that much. I like that one, too. Monopoly? Yeah. I'll take love over Monopoly almost any time. 760 It was during those Colorado radio years that I became more and more and more interested in capturing the video aspect of railroads and the landscapes and the industry that the railroad served. So a generous employee uh, opportunity to go back to school led to me going to Metro State College in downtown Denver learning the art of filmmaking. Things were changing like crazy in the 1980s and 90s while I had the camcorder out there track site. The Denver and Rio Grand Western Gold became Southern Pacific Gray, and then it became Union Pacific Armor Yellow. Tennessee Pass closed. That was the final straw. It was time to go home and get married and figure out what I was going to do with the second half of my life. Telltale Productions actually gave birth to its first video after the sale of my classic 1959 Chevy Impala. I used the money to uh, come up with the funds to scrape together to buy a mammoth computer and uh, some nice software, better camcorder, and uh, start doing the train thing on video. Telltale Productions is a small family-owned Vermont-made business. Your alternative to maple syrup and furniture and teddy bears and gourmet coffee. 
While we're really pleased about the uh, growing network of outlets that are selling the Telltale Productions videos, there is no substitute for buying direct. That allows more money for us to uh, put back into the business and improve the products. And you just never know when you buy direct what might happen, what little prize you might get. In fact, you can ask the guy in Iowa <laughs> what he got when he purchased a Rock Island Remnants tape. That day I just happened to be going through some things and found that I had an extra Rock Island Railroad pass, so I rubber banded it to his uh, uh, video that he had purchased and got back the nicest letter. The little video business with the big heart. Thanks for your support. Could you tell me the story of putting the crap on the rails? Oh, I shouldn't. It <laughs> <laughs> had a coal trussle, and they had to back down to Marshfield's Crossing. You got to start to go up on them. And if they didn't give us a ride, we'd put the <laughs> way up the track. Oops. On the trussle. They'd get way up the top, spin out, and have back way back down again. <laughs> Could I have you tell me that story again, just just exchanging the word for crap? Oh, yeah. Because it's a great story, and I couldn't use it if it had the S word. Oh, you yeah. can Can we just change it to crap? Yeah. All right.